So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while now, uh, and that's how I use the palms coverage. So we'll briefly go over how it works, but mostly this will be a video on how I use the coverage competitively. This video will be focused on defending trips, you know, standard spread out trips, but I may do bunch, snugs, and other sets later on. So let's quickly go over how the coverage works at its most basic form first. So I did a video on this last year, but this year, you know, pretty much things are the same. Against one by three sets, just very simple one by three sets like this, cover four palms will play a coverage check that, uh, you know, is known as a number of different things, but I think the devs uh, refer to as cover four special. So what you need to know is that this is a split field coverage, meaning that what happens on the left is pretty much, for the most case, independent of what happens on the right. So on the left here, you have three over two. You have a cornerback, a weak side safety, and the will linebacker over the running back and the wide receiver over there to the left. And on the right, you have four over three with the strong safety. You have the cornerback over here, the slot or nickel defender, and the three receiver hook, which will likely be your user defender over the three wide receivers to the trip side. Then from left to right, what you have here is essentially man coverage. So right here, there's no matching rules. This cornerback is going to play on this wide receiver no matter what. Now things are different if the wide receiver has a bit of a tighter split. So if he's you know, a tight end close to the left tackle there, things will change a little bit, but that'll be something for maybe you know another time. This weak side safety here is essentially a spot drop zone player. Okay, so he doesn't really have any matching rules in this sense. So he's actually going to be kind of a free wild card type of player that we can do a lot of really interesting things. Uh, and we'll show you that as we go over the video. The weak side linebacker here is essentially on man coverage with the running back. Okay, so if the running back goes on a route, this linebacker will go with him no matter what. So if he goes swings left, swings right, and if he wheels up or if he runs a seam, he's going to go with him. Uh, if the running back stays into block, he will play as flat. Okay, over here, the cornerback over here is essentially in man coverage. Like there are no matching rules with him. He is in man coverage no matter what on that number one wide receiver over there. And then you have this nickel corner here and the strong safety over here that kind of work in tandem. So they're going to play, be playing a two read technique over the number two and number three wide receivers on the strong side here. So what, what that means is that this nickel corner will play the number two wide receiver if he goes vertical. So if he runs a streak, whether he runs a corner route or a post, he's got him man to man. Um, or, you know, if he goes out, say on a wheel route or, or something like that, he's going to take him unless this number three guy Adams here goes immediately out so like a you know out route or a zig or a flat something like that then this nickel corner will look to jump him okay so he'll leave his number two guy and he'll come down on number three so whether that's you know a flat or out or, or even a wheel route you know he'll come down on that and then he'll carry him up the field um, that'll be that if number two runs underneath and number three does not run out, then this nickel corner will just play his flat. Okay, because he has nobody coming to the flat and number two isn't running vertical. So he's just gonna run, he's just gonna, you know, play his regular uh, spot drop zone coverage from there. The strong safety over here, so just ignoring the two read for now, he's gonna play number three vertically. So if number three goes, you know, streak, corner, post, something like that, he's going to be taking him. If number three goes immediately out, again, that nickel corner traps him. Uh, but, num but the strong safety here is going to replace the nickel corner and cover the number two wide receiver vertical. Okay, so if you get a combination like this, the safety will have Valdez Scantling and the nickel corner will have Adams. If you have a combination like this, the nickel corner will have Valdez Scantling and the strong safety will have Adams. Okay, if neither of them go, like actually, let's say if we have something like some crazy route combination like this, the nickel corner will have Adams and Valdez Scantling will be left across the field. 
and the strong safety will just go to his spot zone uh, spot drop zone coverage okay so he won't have any assignments in that case then that's kind of where the last player takes over so as a three receiver hook you essentially just have this hook area you the really the only match principle that you have is that if if that outside linebacker over here has to take the running back so say in this case he has to take the running back all the way to the right side of the field and then you have a crosser from Valdez Scantling coming all the way to the left or a shallow cross coming from him all the way to the left well there's not going to be any flat defender there so that means you as a three receiver hook is going to have to go all the way and cover him so that's really the only thing you need to watch out for is if the running back goes on a rot goes out on a route uh, you're gonna have to be the guy that cut carries any shallow crossers from the strong side all the way to the weak side otherwise you know if he's if the running backs into block you know you're gonna have a flat zone over there so you can just go and help out because everybody else is essentially gonna be in man coverage um, so you can just help out where you see fit so if anybody gets beat um, you can look to kind of undercut that and, and and make a play on the ball. So that's just the basic principles of cover four special. So in order to run cover four special competitively, you need to know what it struggles against. And namely, one of those things is out routes. Okay, so whether that's out route over here or an out route over here, you're likely going to have issues. If you have a stud cornerback, okay, like Tredavious White over here, you likely won't have any issues because he'll be able to break on that really, really well. So right here, if I show you on the left with Kumaro, now he's not a great wide receiver, but whoever you have there, it's gonna be really the same thing. If you throw that, he'll be able to break on that pretty well and make a play on the ball, so that's nice. But if I have somebody that's not as good, Wallace over here. If I do an out route over here, and, and I get that it's not the same, you're, you know, things kind of change over there, you're to the far side of the field, here you're close, over there you're trips here your solo um, but if i were to just swap the cornerbacks in the same rules you'd have the same outcomes um, so yeah over here if i run the out route over here he's going to burn the guy every single time so this can be something that's really really annoying for you especially on third down so one of the things i like to do if i don't have that good cornerback over there like say if you're playing draft champs you don't get some good corners or if you're playing cfm your team doesn't have them um, is that i will manually reman that weak side cornerback over there and then I'll press him as well. So a lot of times if people see the press coverage they you know won't even bother with the out route because usually um, it's much much harder much much tighter than for them to fit it in there um, but again you know because of that uh, even if they do throw that you'll be in a much better position to actually make a play on that ball so you won't you know be great every single time but in this case you know you got kind of a wonky animation but if you clicked on you could easily make a play. Or, you know, if you're running this in big nickel over G, you can show blitz. So you're a bit closer there, but you're not as, you know, right up on that guy. And you can man coverage him. I think shading inside also does a better job. So I can, I can run that there. And you see, it's just much, much tighter there. Much harder to make that throw. Uh, just one more thing I want to say on the man press over here on the weak side. You don't have to necessarily worry about unbumpable routes. So I, I think I have one here in the audibles. So if I go Packer slants, I have an unbumpable route on the left here. But since he's on the line of scrimmage, that solo side wide receiver is always going to be on the line of scrimmage and trips. Uh, those unbumpables don't work as well. So here I can I can I can run that, and I'll show you that the cornerback again isn't even that great. Uh, he's able to run stride for stride with him. So you're not so you know, expose deep if you're if you're running press coverage over there. If you are worried about it, like say if you if you do have a mismatch over there where the wide receiver is much much faster than your guy, um, there's a number of things you can do. Um, we, we could you know potentially use this guy, which is again our free player here. Uh, we can we can put him on a deep half over here, or you can even put him on an inside third because he he'll be a little bit more active inside. And if they lob it up, he'll he'll still be close enough to the boundary there to be able to make a play on that on that streak if you know if if he gets beat over there. But there are other things that we can do that that may be a little bit more sound and ways that we can change it up even more. So this is, you know, in my opinion, a really great coverage, just stock like this, 
Um, mind you, there are a few things we need to do here and there if we see some threats as they come about in the game. But also, in general, you don't really want to be running one coverage every single time. You do want to switch things up because um, the offense, you know, if, if the player has half of brain, uh, they're going to be switching things up as well, trying to attack different areas. And if you're not switching up your defense, things are static and things are really predictable and really easy to attack. So I showed you, you know, that out route is, is really a problem case, uh, but, but there are things that we can do. So I showed you the press coverage, the press man coverage. We can also trap that guy. So we can put that weak side corner on a cloud flat or a hard flat even, and then we can replace him with the weak side cornerback or sorry, the weak side safety and put him in man coverage. So if that wide receiver, you know, runs a vertical or if he runs underneath, this safety will be in a really good position to defend that. Uh, but if he does run, run that out route, which, you know, I'm telling you a lot of these people do, especially on third or fourth down, uh, you're going to have that, that cloud flat there ready to make a play. So just like this, he'll pick that off and you're going to get yourself a pick six. So that's, that's something nice to be able to do. Or, you know, if, if you don't want to run the man coverage there with the safety, which I would actually, you know, suggest you do, but you could also just run a kind of a cover six type of thing over here. In which case then you can, you can take over here on the outside linebacker and you can have an extra hook in the middle of the field. Now, what's good about calling this rather than just calling cover six? So there's two really, really good reasons. First of all, cover six in this game, unlike last year, it actually matches on the right side. Or sorry, it doesn't match on the right side. So last year you had special on the right side. Uh, this year, if you call it, it's just, you know, just spot drop. So if you want to run match and if you want to run cover six, uh, you're going to have to manually do it by putting this guy in a cloud flat and putting this guy in a deep half. And then what's also nice about it is that you can actually disguise it. So if you actually call cover six, this, this guy over here will actually be five yards off the wide receiver. And then this guy over here will be his regular eight or nine yards. And that's really, really easy to see. So if I'm making it myself here, I can actually disguise that so I can bait them into throwing that out route and then my cloud flag can come down and make a play on that. So that's really, really nice. The one downside um, of calling cover six in general, whether you make it yourself or whether you uh, call it, is that this year, unfortunately, they took away, and I, let me just find the play here. Yeah, they took away the ability for that deep half to match on post routes. Okay, so just to make sure I have some time on the pass here. If I have something like this where I'm, you know, matching all these guys on the right side and then I have a post over the top, he's going to get completely free. So it takes a little bit of time and the pass rush likely can get through. But see, in this case, the post is completely wide open. Last year, that deep half would have actually matched him. So that's kind of unfortunate. So that's why I would recommend if you do this, that you actually man up this guy. So if he does run a post, which you actually don't see too often, the post from this solo side guy here, um, you'll be much, much more sound. Okay. Um, there is a caveat here though, is that if you put this outside guy on a hook, like say if you're using him and you have something like this, the halfback is going to get free on the wheel route because that cloud won't match him. The man coverage will go across the field and then you're in a hook curl over here, you know, trying to rob something over there. So unless you want to watch out for that wheel yourself and take him, um, I would probably just leave that quarter flat over there. So it, it seems kind of unnecessary to have two flat routes over there, but if you are coming up against somebody that, you know, likes to put their running back out on routes, um, you're going to be much, much more sound this way. So if I have a little bit of time in the pocket, you'll see in this case, he'll actually match the wheel. I mean, in this case, he actually got burnt because he is, you know, a linebacker. But, you know, if you have a safety there, you'll be much, much better. So those are the ways I want to take away that solo side guy because I don't want to think about that side. As a user defender over here, I want to be, you know, taking away the running back and this wide receiver away from the 
the game. I don't want to think about them. I want to go over here, narrow my focus on just these three wide receivers, and try to you know squeeze the <laughs> squeeze the options just into a much tighter window. Um, so if I can get away, take that out route away, that's going to be really really nice. Now other issues that you have before even focusing on the right side of the field is that you'll have underneath routes from the solo side wide receiver over here. So if I'm the three receiver hook and I'm say traveling with this crosshair or something like that, which I probably don't even need to do, but say if I am, and that flat on the strong side has to vacate because he has to carry the seam up the field, this drag route is gonna get really, really open here. See, he has 10 yards of separation at least, and then from there he can, he can run up field for a few more yards. So this kind of goes back to the idea of running press man coverage. So press man coverage will do much better job on carrying that drag all the way across the field. See here in this case, again, you don't have to worry about that guy because you're gonna have a defender in a much better position to do that for you. And kind of going back to this kind of thing where we're, we're trapping the cornerback on the cloud and then we're replacing him with the weak side safety over there. Uh, this will also do a better job. So if I if I go over here, doesn't do as good of a job. So in this case, he kind of cut outside and then kind of came back and he, he was able to beat him. Uh, but it's better than the original. So yeah, that's essentially what I want to say there is that if you want to take away that isolated wide receiver, you know, you can just press man on him. Uh, if he's really, really good, you might want to consider doing some things like like this, a little bit safer. Um, or, you know, I, I showed you the cover six approach as well. Uh, you just wanna mix up some things over there. I, I would suggest, you know, getting somebody that can really match up with the running back. Um, I've never really had issues with the wheel route too much, even with just straight up linebackers there. But if, if for whatever reason, you have somebody that's, that's wheeling you like crazy, you might wanna consider putting a safety here at linebacker. Um, or, you know, if you have a Shazir or something like that, you don't really have to worry about it. But that, that's just something to keep in mind. So then other things you can do with this guy. So if you're not too worried about the solo side wide receiver there, and if you want to, say, put this guy in man coverage, you could even leave him backed off. If, if, if your opponent isn't running out routes there, you can just leave him backed off. Or if you want to press him to, to remove the possibility of drag routes, uh, you can do that. And then you're kind of free over here. This guy's still free to do a lot of interesting things. Uh, one thing we can do is put him on a hook curl. And by the way, this is kind of important. If you're running this out of big nickel over G, I would suggest using the, the substitution package slot cornerback uh, because that allows you to get different hot routes, defensive hot routes on your three safeties here. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Uh, actually, in this guy, is now going to be a cornerback and then you'll only have two safeties on the field <clears throat> but it allows you to do things like put this guy in a hook curl um, which will just give you a little bit more options in the middle of the field um, because what i do find is that this year you know the coverage actually palms has always been a very sound coverage there hasn't really been any big coverage breakdowns uh in this year this year there's really only one that i can think of and and it's not in this formation um, and then they play much better on the post routes okay so last year you know you can run a post route from really any one of these guys and likely uh, you know it'll burn the guy and get you get you um, a free score uh, but in this case you know they play that much much tighter because man coverage in general is much much tighter so as long as you have some you know decently fast cornerbacks you don't really have to worry about those post routes um, one thing I will say about running stock cover four palms is that this guy does can get pretty busy so if there are some post routes he does actually do a good job sometimes at you know picking up and and running double you know just playing double coverage on some of those posts so that is something i will say um but a lot of the times it's not even necessary and you need a little bit more help in the middle of the field and, and that's where he can help out again so you can put him on a hook here and so he can come down a little bit more aggressively, say if the number one over there is running a slant. Um, well, if he's in press coverage, you know, you, you don't really have to worry about him. Um, but just a, another defender over there that, you, say if 
number three goes in on a slant, you can say the hook curl is going to take him, and then you can, you can kind of be a little bit more focused on number one and number two over there. So you do have that option of doing that. Um, but you do have some other pressing issues with palms. Okay, and, and I probably should have touched on this earlier because this is really one of the biggest issues with this. And I think a lot of people do know is that, and, and I don't know why it hasn't been fixed yet. It's really disappointing. Uh, this nickel corner here, unless he's much, much faster than the number two wide receiver, he's going to get burnt on just simple streak routes down the field. So in this case here, he's kind of slow to transition. And then he, he's pretty much always going to get burnt right here. So you do have an issue there. And wh whether I put this guy, you know, whether I press him, whether I back him off like way over here, he's still going to have issues. Again, if he's really fast, it'll be okay. But even if they have the same speed, uh, he's going to get burnt. Now you can, you can play like this. And I've played many, many games like this, not having to worry about it because still the majority of players have, have no idea that's even a thing. Um, but you know, maybe if it's late in the game and, and if you don't want to give up anything, um, you're, you're especially going to need to kind of consider it. So there's a few things you can do. One thing is that again, this weak side safety is kind of your, you know, Swiss army knife player. He can do so many different things. So if, if he's free, you can man him up on anyone. You can man him up on this guy. You can man him up on the running back. You can man him up on the number three. You can man him up on the wide receiver way over here. And you can also man him up over here. So that what's nice about that is that if they do run this, you'll have somebody there to better defend that. So you'll kind of have a bracket coverage there. But also if you want to put him in man coverage, back on this guy. And like I was saying before, if this guy runs underneath, nobody's going to match him. So in this case, you don't have to worry about him because this safety will be over here to defend him. Okay, so you do have that kind of nice thing as well. Now, it can be kind of silly, like if, if this guy's running an out or a corner route or something like that, you'll have that safety, you know, coming all the way across the field, never going to be able to make a play, and he's kind of taken out of the play in a sense. Um, but, you know, it's it, it just another option that, that has its... Um, has its perks, so in this case, deep and inside. Uh, if number two runs outside, you don't really have anything benefit benefit there. But again, it's just another option, and I think this this coverage is so nice because you do have so many options to work with. Other things you can do is that you can put this guy in a deep third. So I mentioned that earlier. If I press coverage this guy and I want a little bit more help to the left, uh, this third can help out over there. If assuming he's not too far to the right. And he can help over there to the right on that slot wide receiver, assuming we move, manually move him in a little bit. So if we kick him over to the strong side a little bit and put him in a deep third, you'll see that he'll be able to make a play over here and, and deter them from running that. So, so that's also an option. I would say this is probably something that you should run maybe towards the end of the game if you're trying to preserve a lead, uh, just because it's going to be a, a lot kind of more sound because you'll have options to help out to the left on the vertical and to the right on the vertical. And then if you do have any post routes that for whatever reason beat uh, some of your other players, this deep third usually will, will, will help out there. The more aggressive case, say if it's a close game or if you're behind, uh, you'll likely want to do something like this. Or, you know, if, if you're playing somebody that has no clue what they're, no clue about that, uh, you don't necessarily even have to worry about that. The other option is that you can convert this guy to man coverage over here. So if you convert him to man coverage, he's going to tr transition much, much better. So in this case, right here. And the wide receiver is actually faster than him. So he, he was actually able to beat him anyway. So in that case, you know, the wide receiver is much faster than him. I think the ratings work out like that. Um, so he was able to beat him anyway. But, you know, if, if you have a decent matchup there, uh, he'll be able to carry him down the field and, and cover him pretty well. The only thing is that if you are doing that, uh, I would suggest you also put this safety in man coverage on the number three. Because if, if number two goes vertical and number three goes out, uh, nobody will be there to cover him. Okay, so, so you do want him there and you don't necessarily want to go cover that by yourself as a user. Uh, the other thing is that if he does wheel up, um, that's, that's even more important for there to be somebody covering him. 
Okay, so if, if you do go this route of putting him in man coverage, uh, again, remember this guy over here is in man coverage. He's here, he, he, he's here. So you're kind of playing, in a sense, close to a cover one at, at this point, but um, at least it's disguised, right? So it looks like you're running your cover four palms, uh, but it's an easy way to transition to kind of a, a pure man defense uh, if you need that point. Okay, a few other cool things that you can do. So there are ways that you can blitz out of this, and I, and I showed this last year, but you know, if you didn't see that video, and, and if you're curious, there are ways that you can blitz out of it. Uh, you can blitz all your linebackers, and you can even you know press coverage a bunch to get the you know at least one of those guys to come up on the line. Uh, you can reset that, re-blitz all your linebackers again, so you can get your you know defensive backs in maybe a bit of a better position. And then how that works is that again these guys over here are in man coverage anyway. You're hoping the wider the running back, if he doesn't block then you have six on five and your blitz should come in really really quickly uh if he does block you don't have to worry about him at all in coverage um if he does go on our route you you might need to kind of just you know keep an eye on him yourself until the blitz comes in uh, but otherwise what's going to be happening here is that you have a three on two here with your user which is going to be the safety here the deep safety and the the nickel corner right here where you know again this nickel corner here is going to be playing number two out and up or if number three goes out he's going to take him this safety is going to take three vertical or if number three goes vertical he can take number two vertical and then you're going to be taking anybody that crosses inside so likely that'll just be one player if they're coming out on a drag and so if number three or number two is coming out on a drag you would go ahead and take that and then the number ones are in man coverage so you're just going to hope they hold up um, in time for your blitz to come in so kind of it'll kind of look like this if if the running back you know swings out you may need to you know midpoint that a little bit uh, until your blitz comes in now that's probably not you know the best blitz setup but you know technically it's six on five so it's going to come in so there, there are ways that you can maybe make it come in faster so you can show blitz in big nickel over g and that'll bring that weak side safety down and so you could you know put this guy on a blitz put this guy on a blitz and then you can well you can you can do this whole thing again you can bring this bring this guy into the b gap by just press coverage you can show blitz again to bring this guy down and you can mug the a gap here again these guys are in man coverage you have man coverage on the outside you have three on two in the inside the running back in this case is likely going to be into block uh, so just like this so a lot of times you know it's hard to get somebody free uh, but it is possible. So a couple of different cool blitz setups there. Um, other really cool things you can get, you can do with this jack of all trades player is that if again, if you're running over G with the slot cornerback package, you can put him in a spy. So why would you want to put him in the spy? So again, he has no real coverage responsibilities, um, just in the base, you know, cover four special here. So if you are playing against somebody that really scrambles well, so if they have escape artist or something like that, and you know, you don't want to spy your defensive line because you know, they're much slower than that guy. Uh, this is a way that you can potentially get your fastest, one of your fastest players on the field to track him down. You know, maybe he's not gonna, you know, I haven't used this too much, so I'm gonna be honest there, but, and maybe, you know, the escape artist is still, you know, so overpowered that he's gonna, you know, outrun him. But it's a nice option to have because again, you know, he could potentially be somebody fast. He could potentially be a big header, you know, if you have a Brian Dawkins or something like that. Uh, so if he does come on down on the quarterback, he could, you know, potentially force that fumble. Uh, and then you're sound in terms of the coverage because you don't really need him anyway. So if I go like this, and you know, Rogers definitely isn't that guy that you'll need to do this on. Uh, he can come down and make that nice play. And the last thing I want to talk about is the introduction of four lock palms. So four lock palms on the strong side, everything's the same, except on the weak side, what you have is that the safety comes down and replaces on the running back. So he's gonna be man-to-man -man coverage on the running back. This guy's a man-to-man -man coverage regardless. And then now you have a spot drop zone coverage player with the curl flat here. So in this case, you're a little bit better off in terms of now, if you remember from the start of the video, I said that there is a potential that you would have to kind of cross across the field 
if the outside linebacker matches, but in this case, you would never really need to worry about that. So, so that's kind of nice. Um, I generally don't run that too, too much. Um, I don't think it's too necessary. I think there's some more interesting things we can do. One thing I will say, if the running back stays into block, this safety will become a spy. So, um, so that, that's something to note. If, if your opponent run, run, uh, blocks their running back a lot, you don't need to bother spying these guys because your safety will turn into that spy. If he goes on a route, he'll be there to, to clamp down on him. But another thing I like to do with lock palms is man align. So if I man align the defense, this guy will come across and play man coverage on the number three. I can show blitz, he can press coverage on that guy. So it gives me an option to essentially play five on three on the strong side here. So if I'm not so much worried about over here with this wide receiver and this running back, I will run four lock palms and then I'll man align to bring him over there. So then you know I can be much, much more sound on the right side over here. So just a just way of bringing in an extra defender. Um, and on top of that, what's nice about it is that if you are coming up against somebody that's running a lot of, I don't have a run audible here, but if they are running a lot of inside zone out of this formation, well, now you have an extra run defender. So you have, you know, you have every gap covered plus one. So, you know, you have this middle linebacker here is in the A gap. You have the safety coming down. He's going to be your extra player. You have this guy in this gap, this guy in this gap this guy out here so you're always gonna have an extra defender and all these guys are, are gonna be you know primary run defenders so they're, they're not really gonna back up uh, and this guy doesn't even need to be in man coverage you know he can be in a hook you can put him even in a flat route over here um, or you know if you want to maybe help out over here on the number two seam there's a lot of things you can do with this safety over here now sure you could call you know regular palms and then you can bring him over here yourself um, but what's interesting about this is that although this outside linebacker is on a curl flat here, let me put these guys on spies, he will actually match the running back. So if I wheel the running, running back over here, do something like this, you'll see that the curl flat actually matches him all the way up the field. Now again, he is a little bit slow, so it's, it's difficult for him to keep up to some, with some of these speedier backs, but if you do have a safety there, uh, it should help. Okay, that's all I want to say with cover four special or cover four palms against just standard spread out trip sets. Uh, there's definitely a lot you can do there and, and I really encourage you to keep switching things up, you know, whether it's a need based, you know, somebody's doing something that you need to lock down or whether that's just for a matter of changing things up, you know, trying to get some, some, some bait here, trying to, you know, pick off the guy and, you know, run it in for six or, um, or if you want to set in some extra heat, you know, there's lots of things that we can do with this. I, I think it's a really fun and really versatile coverage once you once you really dive deep into it. So that's this, you know, uh, hopefully I can do one on bunch and, and stuff like that because things do change quite a bit. Um, a lot of these things that, that I say you can do, you can't do, plus you can do some other things. So it, it is interesting there. Okay, so that's it for this one, guys, and, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.